Hey everybody, this is the Epic Tiki Podcast, and I am Luke Soyan. This is my guest, Mark Berg. Hello. What? This is... Okay. I, I was going to do... I, I forgot. I was going to do a... Live from Luke's couch, it's Epic Tiki, <laughs> starring Luke Soyan, featuring Mandalorian Cup. Also featuring microphone and guest appearance from the DLC you forgot you downloaded, Mark Berg. <laughs> I forgot about DLC. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, now that I've been starting to do comedy again and I've been popping around, people like were like, Oh, where have you been? And I was like, Oh yeah, I'm just that that DLC you forgot you bought. Wasn't that the joke we had when we hung out with JoJo more often? Yeah, JoJo called me the DLC. <laughs> yeah. It's like we're not we're not unhappy that we have it or I don't know what was <laughs> Yeah, it was like, like 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 it's it's good content, you just forgot that you bought it and it's part of the game. <laughs> yeah. Like, let's see what the Witcher's up to. Oh shit, blood and wine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like not even close to getting to blood on blood and wine on the Witcher, but um in the game. Yeah. I still haven't played. It's the whole game. No. no, any of it. Yeah, no. Oh, okay, yeah. It's been recommended to me several times. It's, dude, it's so daunting. It's like when you even like the first part, like because they, you know, like there's a there's an opening part where you start out and you're like on this one part of the map or or this one map or something, and you have to do a thing, and then then you go to like the bigger part and you can choose to go to different areas. I think right because it's like an open world sandbox almost, right? Yeah, or but it's just there's so much to do, and then when I hear people talk about it and they're like, we, <laughs> like you just. Because you, you have, like, a quest, but then you're just running, like, riding your horse through a town, and this lady's like, help! And you're like, what? And you just stop, and then now you're doing this other fucking 12-part right. quest that's, like, it's crazy. Yeah, I've heard if you're into that kind of game, but like, it, the, the world is built so well where it encourages you to just go out and explore. Yeah. But it's one of those, like, if you want to just complete the main game, like, it's... A lot. You have to be really uh, focused and driven, and I'm not that. Thing. Ah, <laughs> I don't think I am. But um, I yeah, I watched the show, and now I want to play the game more. I think I'm on the last episode. Oh shit, it's so good. Yeah, I loved it. I'm hoping that it's uh, it turns out better than Game of Thrones ended. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> what. It, yeah, it took me a second too to realize. Like spoiler alert, there's different timelines going on. Like yeah. I didn't get that at first, and then by like the fifth episode, I was like, "Wait a minute!" That's that's been like the number one complaint from people. And then the director has been like, or the showrunner or whoever, she's like, "Well, you know, I I think people are smart, so they'll figure it out." And yeah. it's like we are, but it, I think it, I think you could handle it differently so that it's more obvious because the show just kind of like doesn't tell you for a long time. And then all of a sudden, it's like, wait, Geralt's not at this place yet, and this didn't happen yet. Yeah, and then now I, he's I, there. And the like, the law of surprise wedding episode was the one where I started to figure. I was like, we're okay. There's multiple timelines going on now. Yeah, because that's when you find out, like, oh, those are her parents. Yeah. Well, I was looking. Yeah. I was like, wait a minute, that's the queen from the first episode. Like, what is she? <laughs> and why is doing there a different here? but similar looking blonde girl? Right. Exactly. Who's uh, a little older? Yeah. I was <laughs> like, wow. I guess all white bitches in this place look like. The same. Well, also, it's like... It, and then when she started screaming and, like, like doing tornado mode, I was like, oh! But you could also think that that's still Siri, and then you could be like... Then you would be like, well, wait, the queen didn't die, and they didn't... The city didn't get sacked? Like, what the hell? Oh, she jumped straight out that window. Yeah. She, she didn't even jump. She, she just, did. She just, like, she just, like, leaned forward. <laughs> yeah. Straight. Well, no, like, almost like Tommen. Tommen, like, took a step out the window, right? In Game of Thrones. Sound like that. Yeah, he real quick made up his mind that he was going to kill himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> real quick. He's like, I'm 14, I'm sad. I just listened to Billie Eilish. What would you rather have, uh, a, a leader who kills themselves or Trump? <laughs> is it too much to ask for both? <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, there it is. <laughs> ah, nah. Impeachment's happening right now. You should you should watch the news. Yeah, but it... I know it's like people are excited, but it, I also hear people being like, "Well, it doesn't mean he's fired." No, it doesn't. It just means that they they start the the actual trial process. Yeah, so he still might get off, and then even then, I mean, what, Bill Clinton if, did. <laughs> yeah, wait, but so like Bill Clinton didn't get convicted, or what happened? Because I don't even know history very good. I don't. <laughs> very good. I was in third grade. Yeah, when it yeah. happened. <laughs> so I, was, I don't. I rem, I do remember that. Our teacher like sat us all down to talk about it because uh -huh. I think she knew like this is a pretty big deal. Yeah. He was only the second president to ever 
uh, being impeached. Um, but no, all I remember was it, it what like the the fact was it wasn't that he got a blowjob from an intern. It was that he lied about it. it was what like sparked the whole thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I don't remember if uh, if no, he wasn't indicted. He finished his term. Yeah, so that's what I was wondering because I thought like he did get impeached, mm-hmm. but then he still finished. So then I was like, what is impeachment right. even? Like it doesn't even. I thought being impeached means you don't get to be president, from what I learned in school. But then no. it seems like it literally just means we're going to start a trial to to like yeah. and have a vote like a like an actual trial process to see if you're uh it, it, to see if like have you basically like broken the promise of being president and upholding all these laws like have you abused your power and done all these things that people think are illegal blah 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 and no so. he was just a sexy man with a saxophone who got a blow job oh oh i thought you meant trump for a second oh no 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 <laughs> i was like wow we have very different views of trump Nah, he's not sexy no, no. but uh but yeah uh i don't yeah that's so that's pretty much it it doesn't mean that he has to stop anything it just means, and also it's really funny because like he's he, like while everybody's been doing like watching the impeachment trials and everything, he's been filling all these different courts with like his judges. Mm-hmm. Of course, he's doing that because he uh, he's smart. This is like the wrong podcast. To do no, politics. yeah, I'd rather not to get. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather not get political. I, I, just, I don't. I do follow a little bit. I don't. I don't. I'm not opposed to talking about it. I just don't know shit, so I don't want to start like. Oh, or yeah. you know what I mean? Like I don't I wa- want this. I, w- I want to talk about it, but I'm just too lazy about reading the news uh, and knowing I mean, about. I just know I, from Twitter what's happening at the moment, kind yeah, of. Yeah, I pretty much stopped like reading the news about two years ago because it just kept making me upset. <laughs> yeah, I was like, the world's on fire. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, but th- I also like the argument that it's like it's always been bad. We're just it's just more obvious now because of social media and technology in general. Yeah, because I think it's always been bad. I mean, like I you hear like older people talk about like uh, I just heard someone the other day talking about like when like the Nixon stuff when they were a kid Mm -hmm. and that that was like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. And it's like, yeah, like it's it's nothing new. And if you think yeah. about, like, if you lived during Genghis Khan times, it's like, <laughs> we have a new president, and he raped my mom. <laughs> you know, like, it's even worse. Like, it's so much worse. Literally, we have to, we, we're going to build the world's longest wall to keep them the <laughs> fuck out. Because <laughs> they keep just destroying everything and taking our shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's nope. like if, that. I feel like that that wall was built, like, against, like, like Genghis Khan was the Trump. And the Chinese were in Mexico, and they were like, we need a wall to keep this guy out. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I don't know if that's really how it was. It was yeah, the Chinese built the the, the Great Wall to I mean, keep out Mongolians. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, is that Genghis Khan? Now I feel racist. Yeah, that was Genghis uh, Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I was just thinking of Attila the Hun, but that was that was well before. We are idiots, so... I mean, I am, at least. I don't want to say you're an idiot, because you're dumb. really smart. You're going, to, you're going to school for engineering. I am. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean... I always feel like I could have done that. I just didn't want to. Yeah, that's absolutely fair. I mean, it's a lot of school. Like, right now, I'm taking uh, two pre-calc classes. So I'm taking algebra for calc and trig for calc. And my first chem class, because I have never I never took chem in high school, and then a uh, introductory engineering lecture. So it's a lot. Dang. It's a lot of school. I took like, algebra the algebra pre-calculus algebra or whatever and then i took calculus mm. and i think i got a b in both things damn i yeah. think yeah i felt embarrassed because it's been like the last math class i took last semester was like this weird just mathematical concepts of like so many different things uh-huh. like we started with numbering systems so like even different bases like base 8 base 16 that's so weird like yeah. roman numerals mayan like we did all these random things and like we ended up doing uh, the last thing we did was encryption stuff. So it's like all this math. But yeah, so now that I'm in like what feels like a real math class, not to say the last one wasn't real, but um, like the algebra one went fine. And then I got to trig. And one of the first things a professor asked was like, what's the equation for a circle? And I was like, there's a fucking equation? <laughs> like I couldn't, I, I just didn't remember that. Well, equation for like the radius or the diameter like, yeah is that what ra- he meant yeah that's oh, okay. yeah so r equals the square root of x minus h squared plus y minus k it's, squared wait there's that much in a circle equation yeah where it's like h and k represent the center of a circle oh. and then x h and k 
Yeah, that's that's like where the point is. Like that's where the center of the circle is. Oh, as in like X and Y. Yeah, exactly. Like there's but, two. Okay. Yeah, and then gotcha. X, X and Y. I forget, but they ended up. Yeah, they end up being like the radius, effectively. I don't know. It's, do you? How do you? Do was, you feel about like your knowledge retention? Because that was that was my, always like my like even now after college, if you're like, what did you learn? And I'm like, well, I mean, marketing. Oh. <laughs> like I don't know. I can't specifically go like we read this one chapter once and it was about this. Like uh, I sort of remember certain things, but yeah, I mean it's hard to kind of say at this point because everything from last semester is really fresh in my mind. But I mean I tried going to school right out of high school uh like ten years ago. Yeah. I, I couldn't tell you most of the stuff that yeah. I learned back then. I just remember the ethics class I was in was was utter trash. Uh-huh. It was taught by uh, a very very Mormon professor, uh, and like his ethics were like very leaning one way. Yeah, and I was like, that's not ethics. Though. I was like, we're supposed to have a discussion of like what is right and wrong. And he was, I was just super into abortions, and he yeah, he didn't want any guns anymore, and he thought stuff like that. Like, I remember. I'm, just, I, I'm joking. Now. Yeah, <laughs> that's he, the opposite of yeah, what. Yeah, he, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He brought in his family at the end, and like I had to stop, like stop myself from being like, where's your other wife? <laughs> Because they had like eight kids, I was like, "This is insane." What if he just had family week and like on every day of the week he brought in a different family? Oh my god, this is my Monday family. (laughs) This is Tuesday family. This is the family from Chicago. Yeah, Uh, this is weekend family. (laughs) They get two days with me. (laughs) Like, what was the the other the other big thing I remember from from Sac State was my second semester. I signed up for metaphysics, and it was it. It was kind of daunting because it was like, oh, this is like it, it became apparent after the first week. Like, this is a very advanced uh, psychology class, and I just have to read up on some stuff that I'm not understanding, like crystals and <laughs> no, just like certain uh, certain terms, like things that I, like they were talking about, like Occam's razor and Plato's beard. I was like, I don't know what these are. I have to oh, like okay. read up on these. So it's see. more philosophy than yeah, it's a philosophy class. Okay, and uh, so <laughs> at the second week, like I I didn't talk to it. I wasn't you know unfriendly but i just didn't talk to anybody and like one of the students leaned over he's like oh hey you must be a transfer student introducing himself to me i was like no i'm an engineering student here and like he like gawked at me and he was like wait you're an engineering student are you getting like a minor in philosophy Uh i was like no like i just i saw that i could take metaphysics so like I, (laughs) i signed up and he was like but there are five prereqs to get to this class and I was like, what? And then our professor had like been overhearing. He's like, you're an engineering student? I was like, yeah. He's like, how'd you get in here? I was like, I, I just signed up for it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And so he was like, hey, like if you want to drop it right now, that's fine. But like you shouldn't be in this class. Like not to say you can't do it, but like they fucked up. <laughs> like they shouldn't have let you in this class. And I ended up doing fine. I got a B. It was like one of the only classes I passed. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I guess. It was... So that it never hurt you that you didn't have the prerequisites? Weirdly, no. It just somehow I got in. I don't under like to this day. It was just one of those they should have. They should have had some sort of like safeguard on the on their website when I was signing up for classes, but they didn't. What school was it? Sac State. Oh dang. Yeah, but I, yeah. Other than that, I can't. I can't really recall most of the stuff I learned. I also dropped out twice. So <laughs> I feel I, like I remember this. That was like. I mean, you still wear beanies, but it just felt like hardcore beanie, Mark, where you just always had a beanie and a cigarette yeah. in your mouth. I mean, yeah, that was... <laughs> I don't know. Just like You're just like, yeah, whatever, man. That was, I'm, yeah. I'm a 22-year-old jaded kid. I wasn't even 22. I was... Yeah, uh, <laughs> oh, my... I was like 19 or 20. That was like eight years ago, because when I dropped out of college is when I started doing stand-up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good career move, everybody. I recommend it. Yeah, we're both past a punchline. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> um, we went for like two years. Well, <laughs> I, yeah. I might start going again. I'd like to go every once in a while. Yeah. Like even if Maybe like once a month. Yeah, or every other month or whatever. We'll just, let's see how we feel. Every other week is too much. And there, there's there's so much valuable stage time here on Sundays. Mm-hmm. Like You, you can, can hit two to three mics easy. Yeah, you could literally do Comedy Spot and Stab. And Stab is great, especially on Sunday, because Skip oh, Bacon's hosting it, and she brings her friends sometimes. Oh, okay. And then she just laughs at all the jokes, Yeah, she like makes Skip. it so fun in there. Yeah. And then there's Touch of Class, which I've still never gone to. Mm-hmm. We were just talking about this, but I need to go. I want to go, but I'm just, I don't know. I just haven't. Yeah. No, I haven't been there in years. The last time I was there, I oh, man, that must have been about five, six years ago. No, it, 
I was still hanging out with Alec. So I must have been about 20. And all I remember was Rico the Great brought me up and <laughs> and he just said, this next guy's from El Dorado Hills. And normally we only have someone here from El Dorado Hills and one of us is getting arrested. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to do very well here. Like, they're going to love me. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Did you go on stage and go like, who's got the drugs? <laughs> no, that was... <laughs> Oh, no, I just, like, because I was maybe six months into comedy, so I was just trying to power through my set, and... <laughs> you were just, like, like no cereal, guys. You know, the ones on the bottom oh, shelf? Oh, yeah, exactly. I was Frosted like, I get, mini the, spooners. I, get the, I get the homeless cereal. Uh, <laughs> uh, like, That's and, yeah, I just, like, every nobody was listening. Uh, I remember there was a guy playing pool. Like, he did not give a fuck about me. And that's, I, that's pretty typical of Mike's. Yeah, at a bar. Right. Well, that one's, is that a bar? It's like yeah, a, it's a bar. Okay. Yeah. There's all, they also serve. They actually serve really good food. I've gone there more times for food than I have for comedy. <laughs> um, but yeah, and so like I was, I was, I was doing a joke about ecstasy because I, uh, I don't know. I thought it was funny. Or I don't remember what the joke was, but nobody was listening. So I was just like, <laughs> ecstasy, come on, you guys know it. ecstasy, like just being obnoxious as fuck, and the guy playing pool. Finally, like, put the cue down and looked up at me and just went, Hey, man, we get it. <laughs> and I was just like, that's my, all right, I'm, I'm gone, I'm done. Like, like in a movie. It was so good. Like, it was so, like, in, like I, was, <laughs> I was so embarrassed at the time, but in hindsight, it was just, like, the funniest thing that could have happened. Yeah. Okay, we're not. 17 minutes. Okay, it's still I recording. I just want to remember that's a good clip. Okay. <laughs> Also, everybody, this hey, is... Hey, man! <laughs> we get it! It was so good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it, it's a fun workout room, and it's a, it's a good place to test out uh, your riffing. Cause how many how many times did you go there? It was like two or three. Oh, okay. But like the times I went... <laughs> Pool guy scared you away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, like I, I remember I went back after that, and I just watched. Like I like like Rico was like, oh, you want to do a set, man? I was like, no, I'm, I'm just like, I want to observe right now and like see if... And the thing I noticed more than anything is like, like when Carlos went up, uh, Carlos Rodriguez, like he, mm-hmm. like he just riffed the whole time. Yeah, and they love that. Like he, like they love the interaction, and they like they want to be able to feel like they're kind of having a conversation with you. Yeah. So it's it's kind of one of those rooms. Mm-hmm. It's nothing really to be scared of. It's just I know I'm just being stupid. Yeah. My problem is, uh, I had a like a bad experience at a show. I went with um, Dejan Tyler and Michael Calvin Jr. to this show. Um, it was an insane Wayne room that okay. he he used to do like. In Lathrop, like this is like literally seven years ago. Like this was when I just started. Also, God, yeah, we were comedy babies. Yeah, <laughs> little babies, little, little baby. babies. And uh, I went, I went with them to this room, and it was like at the bottom of a hotel. It was like at a Holiday Inn in Lathrop, mm. and it it was like oh wait, wait, okay, never mind. I was thinking of uh, Kyrie's room that he ran. Sorry, continue, please. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, no, it was yeah, it was all the way down there in the two oh nine. And uh, I think Lathrop's in the two hundred nine. And that that room, they they we did the show after like a room a Zumba class or something like that, in like a <laughs> like a the Holiday Inn's ballroom, which was kind of just like a loungy dance it, room. After Zumba, it really smelled like a ballroom. Well, it was only like five people, and they were like women in their forties, and some of them were kind of cute. I don't know, but anyways. <laughs> And so, like, it was, like, that was the audience was, like, those people that didn't leave yet. <laughs> and we just went out into the middle of this dance floor. And there were, like, it was people all around us. And we had to do, like, our jokes to, like, it was, like, theater in the round. <laughs> right. So, so, like, that was fine. And on the way back, uh, Dijan was supposed to do this show um, in Stockton at this place. It was, like, a it's, like, a Mexican restaurant. And they have an upstairs, like loft kind of okay dining area like they have a downstairs dining area but then this it's almost like a private area for like parties but also probably right you just you can open you can bring your tacos up there and look down and be like look at all these fucking peasants (laughs) yeah but it's it was like a big area like it wasn't just like a little balcony it was like a whole thing yeah like almost like a second restaurant so like they had this show up there and it was like a more urban room. Okay. And so like I was there and they were like, well, we'll get, we'll get you some stage time. So they, they threw me on the show, but it was like when I didn't, I, I was still so bad at comedy and all my references were like, no one would get any of my references because I grew up in Folsom and I'm a piece of shit little white kid. No, I, so you like, and I had a very similar like yeah, style when we began. Totally. Yeah. yeah. And we were from the same place. Yeah, exactly. Basically. So, so like I was up there like, 
the bare naked <laughs> one of my jokes was like uh i it wasn't <laughs> even a joke it was just like a made up thing that's like i was like i I told my my nephew to Google the bare naked ladies, and it was really funny when when it was just a bunch of pictures of white guys with glasses, and like that was my joke was just saying that. I'm, I miss when <laughs> when like when we used to be able to write jokes and like I don't like the bare naked ladies because they contain no, neither bears nor lit naked ladies. Yeah, and like it was <laughs> like it felt like you were writing something profound or something, and then yeah. you would say it on stage. You're like, oh, I'm an idiot. Yeah, or you'd get chuckles, but because you were just starting and you don't know what real laughs are, you'd be like. Oh, that was okay. Yeah. I'll keep doing this. Yeah, like you're trying to expand <laughs> on it. It's like there's nowhere to go with that. No, like, no, no. Yeah. So so I did jokes like that. And then they were telling me in the car, like before we got there, he's like, Yeah, if they don't if they don't like you, like they'll just they'll just keep talking and then you'll just bomb. But instead of that, they were just staring at me. <laughs> so it's like they were just like who the fuck let him in here? <laughs> like, just it was like, like that. There's someone's holding a taco and like shit's falling out of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, it was just, so I think I just got like, I'm just like, I don't, I don't, I'm not good. I'm not good at this. And I'm just going to stick to the comedy spot and places like that. Yeah. You usually want to s- stick to places you're safe. But yeah, I, it's, but it's definitely way past time to like get over that. Do you have any like worst or, or just like funny show stories? Of just like shit that's like I can't believe I'm doing this. Like other than that, um, it's like I'm. Uh, I don't. I don't know why this is reminiscent of. Um, I'll try to think. Why I you're doing. I got uh, I got booked in my hometown of fabulous El Dorado Hills, where the rich and white uh, fuck each other's wives, and uh, <laughs> it's a true thing. There's like a huge swingers community. And the daughters fuck the other dads. I I don't know. I'm just assuming. I don't want to know about that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, so, I'm saying like they don't fuck their own dads. They right. Go. Oh, yeah. But yeah, you remember Sauce. I'm going up the family tree. If you're watching the video, it's like, here's the daughter. She goes over here to this family tree. It's real tree. popular on the internet right now. That's all I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the Sauce in the saloon were doing yeah. comedy. And then the saloon started booking like actual shows, even though they had no idea what the fuck they were doing. Yeah. And I got booked to feature with Ngayo. Mm-hmm. And so we drove up there, and we go inside. Show's supposed to start at 8, and it's like 7.15 or 7.30. And the stage area is just, like, there's there's a whole... There's, like, 20 middle-aged dudes drinking beer with laptops sitting around all these tables on stage. With laptops? Yeah, so we were like, hey, what's going on? Like, we're supposed to start the comedy show in half an hour. Land party. And, oh my god, I almost wish, but they were like, ooh, sorry, we double-booked you with uh, a fantasy football draft. Oh. Yeah, so Ngayo and I were like, the fuck? Like, we're still getting paid, though, right? And they paid us up front, so we're like, all right, just let us know when to start. And we ended up, we, we just went to the parking lot, and we were smoking joints uh, singing all the songs from the labyrinth. What? That was yeah for like an hour until like nine o'clock, and they they found us and they're like yeah like we're ready to start the show, and we go inside and now there's nobody in there, like there's no one. There's like the you bartender. Guys would have been better off just doing the jokes in the middle of them, like just stand and walk through and be like, oh, Ladanian Tomlinson. <laughs> yeah, are you guys doing an auction or are you guys doing a, a snake draft? What you doing? <laughs> yeah yeah no but it, so i just remember that was one of the funniest like i got paid up front so it didn't matter and we but like i performed like to like four or five people and gaio did very well as he usually does yeah but it was just i remember it being so funny i was like i can't believe we got we got bumped by a fantasy football draft yeah that's that's funny what else what have i i can't like i know there's like stories but i can't nothing's like coming to my brain right now i know i've done stuff where like I've had to like not use a microphone. Mm-hmm. That happens. There was like, I mean, this isn't that exciting or crazy, but JoJo's uh, JoJo Lewis had like a, a Empire comic, Comics Vault. Yeah, he had a, like it was a it's a really great show that he was doing it. Is that, he not doing it anymore? No, oh. the audience, the attendance started falling off, and he just kind of <sighs> gave it up. <sighs> I know. <laughs> I'm hoping maybe like I could I could see like maybe in the summer or like in a year or so, maybe he'll just bring it back like. Oh, it's back, and then it gets excitement from that, you know. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. But well, there was one time where like the mic wasn't working, or he forgot a piece of it, or something, and we just had to like yell at the crowd, and it was kind of fun to like be an orator, you know. Yeah. Like it was just like hear ye, like you're just right. As I don't know, it's yeah. But fuck, I, I'm trying to think of like a weird place that I performed, and I just can't think of one right now. Yeah. 
I'm I suck. It's okay. My memory isn't good. I mean, I've I've done other like I've I've driven I drove all the way to Butte, Montana to do one show mm. after uh I got to do when Johnny Taylor uh, recorded his first album, Tangled Up in Plaid, mm-hmm. uh, he asked me to be one of the opening sets. Which... <laughs> Featuring JoJo Lewis's laugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should be a, a special thanks I feel on like the CD. That's why he r- recorded another album so quickly is because JoJo's Jojo laugh. Did. <laughs> He's like, I could have written this for, I could have written this for five years, and now I have to make a new album so people don't. That's my Johnny impression. Yeah. Okay. So people don't hear JoJo's fucking laugh <laughs> during my set. <laughs> Trying to post it on social media without JoJo finding out. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but yeah. So like that was that was that was a pretty big. O- I think I was like maybe two years in. Uh huh. So like that that felt pretty special. But like I literally after the show, uh, went and picked up the other comic, uh, like eleven thirty at night, and then we drove. Uh, until like three in the afternoon to Butte, Montana. And like while we were going, we got it because we were supposed to do two shows. We were supposed to do one in Butte. And then there was like the next night, there was a city like another two or three hours north of there. Yeah. Like real close to Canada. Um, and do a second night there. And like while we were driving in the morning, we got a call at like 8 a.m. from the booker saying, hey, the we canceled the second show due to lack of interest. Oh, man. And so they're like, do you still want to do it? And we're like, we're like halfway there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, We'll do it, but like you got to pay us more. And all I remember, we got there. You guys for more money for less show? Yeah, and they did. Like wow. they paid us like an extra. I, I got like an extra fifty bucks out of it, which was like gas money, pretty yeah. much. So I got like it was like one hundred and seventy five to do a feature act. I was not ready to feature. Like that was the last time I was tested. Like maybe I'm ready to feature. I was like I'm not. Yeah. Um. You, but that's what that's like the spirit you have to have to keep doing comedy. Right, I you I have was, to think that you're ready when you're not. You're constantly not ready, but oh, you think you are. Right, and I knew I was like it's all the way in Butte, Montana, at some random bar. Nobody's gonna know who I am. Like this won't hurt my career at all. It's gonna be yeah. a way for me to like like stretch my wings and just see well, what I can and do. And that's a, that's another funny thing because now now like sets that I thought like this is gonna hurt if I do this bad. It's like no one remembers like three months two months one month later that yeah. you bombed at this one show like, right you know yeah but sorry keep going yeah oh no that's pretty much like we just we got there uh we checked into the hotel uh took a nap for like three hours uh woke up went and did the show and then uh i was three days shy of being 21 <laughs> so like i couldn't drink but i hung out with everybody while they like it was this old house like this old like edwardian victorian looking house that had been converted into a bar yeah and so there was like this huge porch out front and we were all just out there like hanging out everybody was drinking and then went back to the hotel room at like two in the morning and then woke up at noon and the management was like oh we knew you were the comic so like you were supposed to be out at 11 but like, you have to leave now and literally got back in the car and drove all the way back 14 hours to California. So we were in Montana for 20 hours, and it was a total drive of, like, 28 hours. Yeah. And I got paid about $175, and, like, 60 of that went to gas. Of course, yeah. Yeah, I got back at 4 in the morning, and I just remember, I was like, this shit is awful. <laughs> That's the thing, when, when you start, as you do, you'll be like, I'll drive, I can do the thing. And- oh, Yeah. That was, that and it's just a way for the headliner to like save money, <laughs> right? But that was the other thing is like if you if you have a car as like an up in, like a new comedian, like you can get a lot of gigs. Totally, yeah. That's why that's actually like part of why I bought I got a Subaru as my next car. Yeah, because I was like maybe someone will take me to Reno or something when they do a show up there, and then I can drive when it's snowy. You know, like right. all wheel drive. Ooh, need, fancy. I know. Ooh. Um, and also I was like maybe I'll go snowboarding again finally, but I haven't done that yet. But let's go snowboarding. Yeah, we should do that. I haven't been snowboarding in years. I'd love to do that. I know. I need to I want to make sure everything's good on my board, but I'm sure it's fine. I just need to like tighten the screws, I guess. I need to get new bindings and boots. Oh yeah. Mine yeah. are still I feel like mine are still good. Like I don't Oh, I just grew out of my old ones. Oh. So okay. they don't fit. Dang, so you haven't gone for a while. Because you've been the same size. <laughs> for... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. I've been five eight since like woo, like senior year of high school. So you went, yeah, wow, that's, yeah. I was 4'11 going into high school. Like, to, like it was like, when I was getting on the bus my first day of high school, the bus driver went, wow, you're tiny. <laughs> he just looked like, at he was like, I've never seen a hobbit with shoes on before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was, thank you? And then he was like, are you sure you're on the right bus? And I was like, motherfucker, yeah, <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> lights like, a cigarette in his face. Well, it was, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was also dumb because like even if I was on the wrong bus, it was like the high school and our middle school were across the street. I was like, I'll figure it out, dude. <laughs> Not completely inept. Yeah, that's funny. That yeah. I don't know. What what school did you go to? Did you go to Oak Ridge? I did go to Oak Ridge. Oh, okay. Yeah. The middle school is across the street? Yeah, Rolling Hills. Right across the street. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. That's I'm not... trying to remember. I feel like it was farther down. Oh, that's the elementary school at Silva Valley. I also went there. Okay. Yeah. I played basketball at Rolling Hills a couple of times in like some weird... Like Folsom had like a basketball like rec league, and yep. then there was like another one that I joined for like one season that was like between both cities or something. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. Not a good story. Okay. <laughs> but your Montana story reminded me like, I mean, not, I, I already, I know about this, but I went, like, I went to Canada to do a show. Oh, that's right. With Jimmy Earl? Yeah. Yeah. And that was like, the same kind of craziness because except the show was like really worth it. Yeah, that looked like that looked like fun. <laughs> it was yeah, cuz we we got to the airport like what like 7, 8 in the morning, flew to Seattle, landed in like rush hour traffic and drove to Vancouver and then when we got there we like went to dinner at the sushi restaurant with his friends, like his high school friends, which his high school class was like 12 people. What? Yeah, cuz the they whole class up- was there almost it was like literally half of them damn and like yeah because they um it's wait is he from canada yeah he was born i think he's from toronto oh, I didn't and then know that. he moved to a city that's like a suburb of vancouver and that's where he went to high school little toronto yeah <laughs> well little vancouver oh uh, little vancouver yes uh lv no um and so like then from there we went to the to yuck yucks and did a show and then we packed everything up drove back to seattle Got to the airport at three in the morning and flew home. Oh, damn. So no sleep. Like right after the show, you came back. Yes. How long is the drive from Vancouver to Seattle? Um, Like five, six hours? No, I think it was like three. Oh, okay. So it's right. I don't know Canada. So it's like Two right. Two or three hours? Because yeah. I know Seattle is like pretty far north in Washington. It's, yeah. I haven't been there since I was like 10. It's not a crazy, it's not that bad. The worst, like the part that made it take a while was that it was traffic like that, right. like it was like five we got on the road at like five so it was just you know typical like this is probably every day there's traffic because right. of people leaving it's downtown Seattle. yeah yeah so but that was super fun and crazy and no yeah, that's cool yeah no yeah. you don't get to do that with a lot of jobs uh i had to do that once <laughs> what like a a no sleep go somewhere for yeah kind of, um at my last job, they like t- so they they would do this like orientation thing at our at their corporate office down in uh, L.A. Uh-huh. and they were doing it on November first, so the day after Halloween, like a bunch of fucking monsters. I think that's when our show was. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, uh, this was like two years ago. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so they they emailed me and said like we want. We want you to come to this. Yeah, it was and, November first was when we oh, went cool. there and did the show. But yeah, so they were so they were saying uh, they wanted me to fly out, and the meeting started at nine. And there nine were a.m. Yeah, and they were also so they were like, oh, uh, wait, you said this was in Vancouver, or Seattle, Where L.A. You, L.A. Okay, sorry. Yeah, okay. so flying from Sacramento down to L.A. Uh-huh. But they were basically like, hey, I know it's only two weeks out, but uh, also we won't pay for the flight up front. Like, you have to pay for it and then expense report it to us, like, along with, like, whatever Ubers or Lyfts you have to take. And I was like, god damn it, you guys. Like, this is ridiculous. Like, especially when you get a, an email from one of the VPs of your corporate, like, saying, like, we'd like you to come. It's like, okay, so I have to go. And I got lucky. Enough. But, yeah, it was basically tried to go to bed at, like, 9 o'clock the night before but when i got home from work the power was out in my apartment so i was trying to contact my maintenance people to be like what the fuck i need my power was this your midtown apartment yeah that tiny one and but yeah so basically try to go to bed at like nine o'clock but it's halloween and i lived on the other side of easy on i which is a bar uh, so yeah, yeah. non-stop i could just hear people all night and I had to wake up at like 3 30 in the morning to catch a 5 30 a.m flight land at seven o'clock get an Uber uh, down to the office and stayed there until like four o'clock and then it got right back on a plane and flew back up and was home at like eight o'clock or eight thirty. It was, I hate it was when, a corporate nightmare. Yeah. And the worst part is when they go, 
will pay you back after. So it's like, oh yeah, that that's just then you're they're like assuming that you you have this like extra cash to throw at a flight last minute. Yeah, I mean, I got lucky and I I did one of the Southwest like get me out of here things. So I found flights. But even those get expensive. It was sixty the, bucks. Oh really? Yeah, that's I mean, I, like I was. It, that's not a ton, but it's like, yeah, dude, that's a good amount of money. Was it? When did you buy the flight? Like, was it the week of or something? It was like two weeks before. Oh, okay. Because that was all they told me. Like, in yeah. a lot of other people, like, they told us like three months in advance. I was like, yeah, what the fuck? <sighs> I hate that. But yeah, so when I got when I got back to LAX, I uh, I expense report reported like five beers. <laughs> like, I got drunk as fuck after. <laughs> That's cool. They, they let you do that? Oh, yeah. Well, I just didn't tell. Like, I just sent them the receipt and it didn't show. Like, I did. Oh, it was like I the did amount the... of your dinner, but not, or your lunch. But exactly. Okay. But it didn't include, like, it didn't yeah. say what it was. I was like, yeah, fuck you guys. And they were like, this seems like a lot. And I was like, have you guys ever been to LAX? And, <laughs> yeah. and they were like, oh, yeah. Like, a pizza probably was about 50 bucks. <laughs> You're right. That's probably a lot of money. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. But yeah, it was, it's just, yeah, uh, corporate life. I don't miss it right now. No, me. Yeah, I don't either. Right? Even, yeah, the state. High five. Yeah. Uh, at the at the state, I had something like that because there the first trip we went on, we drove to um, LAC, mm -hmm. LA County Prison or whatever. In um, where is that place? It's like this weird little Coalinga. No, no, Coalinga is like Central Valley. It's like ugh, fuck, I can't remember what it's called. They have a mall. Van Nuys. No, it's like in, if you're in the grapevine, you take like a left at some point. Oh, oh, oh! I know exactly where you're talking. I I couldn't tell you where that is, but I, think, I know what you're talking about. I think the city is starts with an L, an L, but it's not L.A. But it's called. That's where the L.A. County, whatever. Yeah, right outside the city. I'd like to say right outside the city, but L.A. is such a huge city when you encompass like all the other many cities that are a part of L.A. Yeah, L.A. Oh, it's just where is it? Where is it? <laughs> okay, this is not... It's location area code. That's not it. Los Angeles County Prison? Maybe I'm saying the wrong thing. It's... F I think you'll be fine. I just want to know. Oh, Lancaster. That's where it is. California State Prison, Los Angeles County. Yeah, so we okay. had to go there. But they... It was like that thing where... They they had to like we had to do this special like letter and form fill out to get an advance of money to me so that I could book I had oh. to, so that I could what did I have to get I think oh for the hotel room because I I didn't I had to get my own hotel room and then right so it was like a pre right. a pre reimbursement it's a pre reimbursement <laughs> I don't know reimbursement pre reimbursement I didn't want to say the m the right pre reimbursement. We Epic Tiki Podcast creating new words. Right, that was like I, I thought about the other night because I just couldn't sleep. I was like, the word refrigerator <laughs> infers that you can refrigerate something. Yeah, <laughs> again. Right to begin, it's like you're refrigerating it, so you're doing it for the second time. But something was refrigerated at one point. <laughs> This is what happens when I stop drinking and smoking weed and I just can't sleep. I'm just like, hmm. <laughs> Words are silly sometimes. <laughs> do you ever do you ever do that thing where you get a word stuck in your head and then it and then it, you say it a bunch of times and then it doesn't it doesn't sound like a real word? Oh yeah, all the time. Like I did that with closet one time. I was like driving in the closet. car and I was like closet. Close it. Right. Close There's not enough letters in that word. Like I just <laughs> you just start it does it doesn't work if you just say it but yeah in that you, mo it's almost like having deja vu right it just your brain is all of a sudden like is this a word this isn't right yeah <laughs> yeah i was gonna say more about something going to la being reimbursed yeah they had a, you had to take a hotel work work corporate I life oh bullshit. so you were you were talking about um when you you put the beers on your tab. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So my I bef my other job that I had for like five years when I I worked at this place called Britannia Pacific Properties, which Ooh. I don't even it it sort of it's still there, but I th I feel like it sounds a little fancy. Well, it, it's basically like there's like rich British people who invest who take they invest their money here in real estate, and the company was just managing that shit. Oh, okay. So it's, okay, it's a it's management real, firm. Yeah. Okay. Which it's like one of those ones where it's like it's like a middleman type of thing. Yeah. It's necessary, but it also when you think about it, you're like, this is stupid. Yeah, because otherwise, <laughs> like, they have to like look into all the laws and everything and figure it out. Whether like like you pay us a fee and like we'll handle it for you. Yeah. Okay. 
So they owned like hotels and other random property. Like they owned, they owned like part of Iron Point and Folsom where like Best Buy is and stuff. Oh and they yeah, were like yeah, yeah. Renting to Best Buy or whatever. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, but that whole development. Yeah, and so there was like a hotel. They bought this this land with like a ho like a motel and like another motel type of stay and, place. And they put four of them together to make a hotel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh no, it, they were it was in a uh, Mammoth, California. I wanted to riff on that, but I didn't really know what you did there. <laughs> Monopoly. Oh, so you gotta get you gotta get four four houses together. Oh, and then you can buy a hotel. I haven't played Monopoly in a long time. No, but maybe we should play. No, we should live stream Monopoly. I do have Star. I have I have <laughs> the uh, Star Wars Special Edition Monopoly when it came out in ninety seven. Still have it. I th- I want to say I have it too, but no. I don't. It might be at my grandma's house. If you lost the Darth Vader or the Boba Fett, it's worthless. Really? I don't know. I just that's what I think. <laughs> Probably because yeah. that's part of the game. Mm-hmm. But in that one, you put like you put four uh, Tie Fighters together to make a Star Destroyer because that's how shit works. You anyway. only need four. Only four. That's all or the four, mass you or, need. Or to four X wings to make a home one. Yeah, I think it must have been a probably Calamarian cruiser. Anyway. So, yeah, so they, so it was in Mammoth, California. So they had this, and they were trying to, they were going to demolish the motels and build like a boutique hotel for like mm-hmm. douchey LA people who mm-hmm. wanted to come and like. Oh, up to Mammoth. Yeah, that sounds very correct. Yeah. So, so I went up there like five or six times to film. It was actually like one of the coolest things I ever got to do at, at one of the like lamest jobs I ever had. Yeah. Because, <laughs> because I, one, I got to learn how to video edit and like, research all that shit and got paid because it was like they wanted to have like oh we want you to make something like a a documentary about this process so then i had to like research like what computer to buy what software to get what cameras to get and so i did like all this work on company time right they're paying you to learn all that shit yeah it was amazing yeah um and so like one time we went up there and there was this guy uh his name his name rhymes with schmechter and (laughs) Uh, if I don't say his last name, it doesn't matter. He's an actor. Uh, anyway, so... <laughs> is anyone going to know who he is? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be really funny if we got in trouble for this somehow, but I don't see why. You get a cease and desist. I don't even think he... I don't know. He probably still works there. He's kind of a douche. But anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> so Schmechter. I had a joke about him, too, but I'll, maybe I'll talk about that in a second. So it, this isn't that crazy of a story, but I remember like we went up there a couple times together. A couple, I went a few times by myself because I would, I would like go up there and film... I went like four different seasons, like all the seasons to film to get footage to make this like like video. Like it kept changing. It was like going to be a documentary, then it was like like a promo video. So I just went up there and filmed a bunch of shit. And like one of the times we went up there, there was like or we we would like go out to dinner and we he would just like order drinks and put it on his tab. Yeah. So then, or, and then get reimbursed. And like, I would do that. And then my boss was like, you can't just put alcohol in there. And I was like, but Hector, Hector did it. (laughs) And she was like, well, he's a manager. I was like, okay, fine. Yep. (laughs) So, but anyways, and then there was one time where we went to this Mexican restaurant that had, they had a burrito with duck in it. And it was so fucking good. Interesting. Yeah. I forget what this place is called. I want to say it started with an O and it's somewhere in Mammoth. So look it up. But hmm. um, we were like getting like we were just having dinner. And then like this waitress who like wasn't even cute. He was like trying to impress her for some like he's just like a weird hornball creep guy. Yeah. He's like he was like talking to her about he's like the tequila is pretty good, huh? Yeah. OK. Uh, we'll, we'll take the flight. We'll take the flight. We'll try that. OK. Yeah. Ha. Huh. OK. Like <laughs> This is the way. <laughs> this is the way. <laughs> Do you know the way? <laughs> Do you know the way? Come with me, brother. <laughs> what was that last part in the jail cell? Like, oh no, brother. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> so my Ebola cannot come here. <laughs> so yeah. So he ordered this tequila flight. And he was like, he was doing it. Like it was very clear he was doing it because he was like trying to impress her. Like, I'm gonna throw my company corporate credit card around, and also I like to party and have drinks. Uh, <laughs> I like to party and have drinks. My name's Luke, and uh, I also like to party. <laughs> yeah, I was just there. Like, 
I actually I actually do want to party. Yeah. I don't necessarily want to have sex with this waitress, but I I would like to have. But if there's a party, have a tequila or seven. And yeah. So, and I've yeah, and then when that's also like super high elevation, so I didn't know that I would get extra hungover. Oh yeah, was that shitty. was. But I was still like 24, 25, so like I could handle it kind of. Yeah. You know. But anyways, so like we did that, and then we get the tequila flight. He takes, and this guy's Mexican. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I'm not saying like you have to like tequila if you're Mexican, but I'm Russian and I will drink vodka and like you got to fucking drink it. You put it in front of you, you drink your people's drink. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so like It's like me and beer. He takes one sip of like one of them and he goes, "I don't like tequila." <laughs> I was like, "Why did you order the fucking tequila?" He's <laughs> trying to wave his company credit card around. Exactly. Oh. And I was just like, "Man, you are such a piece of shit." <laughs> so <laughs> like <laughs> So then I like I just, I remember like just being like, all right, well, I'm going to drink it. So I had like four shots of tequila. Like back to back? Like Like towards the end of the meal because like he just didn't do it. Like I was drinking one or two of them and then I just did the rest of them before we left. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was very hard to be awake the next day and I think I had like diarrhea shits. (laughs) Oh man. Yeah. The high altitude drinking is super real. Yeah. And like I didn't know to the, when I flew to, uh, to Norway two years ago. I, I didn't think I was like oh it's a pressurized cabin like whatever because my friend and I looked up and we found out you can you can actually bring as many mini bottles of alcohol as you want on a plane what? as long as they fit inside of one quart bag as many as you want like a little plastic baggie yeah just a one quart baggie wow and so my friend and I the night before we went to a Bevmo and we each got like seven or eight of them and managed to like I was like oh yeah if we stagger them like four at the bottom facing up and then we put more facing down so they fit in like they'll all fit in the bag and the totally like i i hadn't flown like like i've never flown overseas so i didn't know what the problem but yeah going through security i was like can i have this and she was like yeah totally i was like sorry this is my first like like big flight in 10 years She's like that explains the mini bottles and <laughs> she's like <laughs> but you're only 411 are you on the right plane <laughs> uh sorry no, it was fine, but yeah. So when we uh, when we got on the flight from Dallas to Heathrow, <laughs> you're like, it's okay. <laughs> Norway is right across the street from Hobbiton. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> Keep going. Yeah, pretty much. I'm gonna take the big eagle there. Uh, <laughs> after losing my way. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so I had no idea. Like, so we were so we were up in the air, and I brought my switch. So my friend and I were playing Mario Kart. And just like in the course of like two hours, we you were prob- so good at Mario Kart. Oh man, asshole. I still am. I'm hella good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, over the course of like three or two or three hours, we probably had like maybe four or five shots, and I was pissed drunk. <laughs> like I had no idea, and like it was one of those because I had just been sitting there and like we'd been eating the plain food, which is also better than you would think. Um, well, d- also isn't plain food like heavily seasoned? Because when you're at altitude, you don't taste as well? Maybe. I don't I, know. I heard that somewhere. But I had, like, I, I think I had some sort of curry chicken on the way there and with rice, and, like, it was good. Mm. Like, they came by and gave me coffee, like, super nice flight attendants and all that, but... That's uh cool. Or the, yeah, oh, man, I did have more drinks than I remember, because at first they were asking what kind of wine you wanted with dinner, and so I was like, well, I'll take a white. And then the guy in front of me asked for a beer, and they gave him a can of Heineken, and I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know beer was an option, could I, could I trade mine for beer? And the guy just handed me and my friend, like, four Heineken. The, the steward? Yeah, the for free. Like, you're supposed wow. to pay for, like, you get one complimentary, you're supposed to, and he was like, oh, yeah, you guys just have these. What? And I was like, fucking dope! Damn. So, like, we got pretty drunk, but yeah, I was sitting there for, like, two or three hours playing Mario Kart, and I was finally like, I gotta go to the bathroom, and, like, I stood up, and, like, everything hit me. I was like, whoa, like to the point that I knocked over like our glasses of tequila, like all over the middle seat, which was luckily empty. Oh. But yeah, I had that. I was like, oh my God, I'm so drunk on this plane. <laughs> was it one of those planes with like a middle row of seats and then the side? It was huge. I've okay. never, I'd never been on a plane that big. Yeah. But yeah, it was like, like going through first class, like they had the pods where it's like they're like one oh. chair would be facing that way and one's facing yeah. the other way. And, like so you could like, put a partition up in between your friend. Yeah, no, you could actually. Lay it all the way down. And then behind that was business class. Like, it felt like that episode of Futurama when they're on the Titanic. And, like, they keep going down. It's just getting worse and worse. 
Because, like, the next one was, like, business class and, like, really big chairs. Like, you could lean really far back still. And then it was, like, world traveler. So it was, like, regular seats that you would expect. And then we got to the back, which I just – I was calling it the Fiesta deck. And it was just cages. It was <laughs> – yeah, pretty. You know what? I'm sorry about that because you said Fiesta and then I said cages and that sounded real bad. Oh, that's not what we were. That's not what we. That's meant. not what we were going for. But I was just because it was a party. I, was, I had cages preloaded before you said fiesta. Anyways, oh, okay. but yeah, it was just like like <laughs> all of us poor schmucks in the back. Yeah. Uh, and these very nice like this group of old ladies who were going to England for the first time that were drinking gin with us. <laughs> but yeah, it was just that funny. Like as you were going back, it's like oh, this plane's getting worse all the time. <laughs> that but, I mean, isn't that episode? I haven't seen it for a long time, but isn't it like like. The Titanic, like the movie, it's based off of that. Oh, yeah. That's sort of how the movie is. There's like the really rich people, and then down in the yeah, hold, th- they're like doing Irish jigs because we're all still like. Yeah, as the not- people that work on the ship and all yeah. that. Yeah, that's a, they're just making a joke about that. And like yeah. they pass by like one floor that's just like laundry. Yeah. <laughs> and then below them, it's like they call it the Fiesta deck, and it was just like this bland, bleak, like what looked like a, a submarine. But no, it's it wasn't the Ford that. Fiesta of decks. Yeah, right. <laughs> but it honestly wasn't that bad. Also, pro tip, if you are flying in the Fiesta deck at the back of the plane, what you should do actually is like if you're flying with somebody else is you buy um you buy the window seat and then you buy the aisle seat and you leave the middle one like unbought because chances are someone's not going to want to buy a seat in between like two random people. Uh-huh. And if they do, you could just like tell that it was like, "Ah, oh, like we we accidentally like would you mind just switching with one of us?" Okay, yeah, and then you just still sit together, but, but yeah, hopefully like, no one buys it and you have an extra seat. Exactly, like, we had a seat in the middle, so, like, we put the armrest up, and, like, we were both able to, like, put our legs up a little bit, yeah. and, like, like keep pillows you and You could kind of sit like we are, like, sideways Exactly, like, that. we did yeah. that, so, like... We, Touch like, knees. Right, and, like, we put, this, <laughs> we put the switch up in between us, so we were able to sit there and just play video games. It was cool. Yeah. Did you get... Have you, have you gotten a switch battery, like, an extra battery? I did buy an external battery for that okay. one, yeah. Did and, you get the little square one? Because there's one that, that like... Anchor or Anchor makes yeah. for it. That's what I bought. I it might have been it like, but yeah, you can like clip it to the back of it. Oh, mine doesn't. Do oh that. yeah, it was pretty. It was like thirty or forty bucks on it. It was, it was like an extra ten hours. Damn, of battery life. I think but, mine was fifty, but it's cool because it also charges my phone. Okay, yeah. So does mine. It's USB C. Yeah. Um, I love it so much. But I don't yeah, use it as much as I want to. But when I do end up traveling again, I'll. Yeah. It's nice to have. Yeah. But yeah. Now, so I bought one of those. It was fun. That's cool. It's it's really funny to bring a Nintendo Switch with you to Europe, and like any time we had downtime because I was visiting friends in Norway. Like, any time we had downtime, like we all sat down and we were just like either playing Mario Kart or we were all switching off playing Breath of the Wild. Uh huh. Wait, so you only bought brought yours, and they had to share. Yeah, yeah my friends. Uh, yeah, they don't have. Okay, they didn't have one yet. Yeah, but then, like my my friend now fiance. It's like we'd be watching movies, and she'd be like, "Can I play uh, Mario Odyssey?" I was like, "Yeah, absolutely." And like after like two hours of her trying the Switch for the first time, I just she leaned over to my friend and she was like, "We're buying a Switch." Yeah, dude, it's so good. I oh, it's, I, I want to fly more just so that I can play it because it's hard <laughs> to justify time to play it. Oh, I you love know, the Switch. No, I know, I do too. But I mean, it's like. When you're a kid, you're in like you go on trips with your parents or something. You're in the car a lot. Oh yeah, in the back seat and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like you just like I played my Game Boy so much. Oh my god, yeah. I mean, I I got I re- all my Pokemon to level one hundred. I was gonna say I remember being like grinding like, six just, years old yeah. and like just going through the Elite Four. I was like, well, yeah. we're gonna be in the car for about eight hours. So yeah, you do it so much that you get sick of it. But also like, oh no, I would just literally just like I wouldn't like I'd be looking out the window just pressing A. <laughs> yeah, just, like it doesn't matter. It razor doesn't leaf, matter. razor leaf, razor leaf. Yeah, thunder exactly. shock, thunder shock. Yeah, but then once you get the level 100, it's like, woo! And then I feel like like, five more times. (laughs) Yeah, that's sort of like how I feel like that's one of the reasons why the stupid Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes game we play that we like it is because we just have this like grind, like you've just you the grind mentality, like you know, like you just got you got to do it. Yeah, and then like the reward of like getting the character like leveled up Mm -hmm. and maxed out, you're just like like 12 now at least. Yeah, like. Yeah, that took effort. Well, I got I got uh, my Malik and my Grievous both to Relic Seven. Oh damn! We're about to go on the deep end. That, so. That's end game shit for anyone. Most of you who don't play Galaxy Heroes. <laughs> yeah, my mom always gets mad like when uh, me and my stepdad, uh, his his screen name in our yeah. guild is Vins Clortho. Yeah, uh, Uncle Vins. Sorry. Yeah, he's Uncle Vins now. Yeah, 
And he has a picture of Jolie Binda, so it's like this old, this bald creepy white old man. uncle. Yeah, <laughs> but it was um, hilarious. Yeah, but we'll we'll like we'll I'll go over to their house and I'll just be we'll just be talking about it. And my mom's like, "Oh, you're talking about your cult." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, yep." And uh, but that's the same one with my brother plays too. And yeah, yeah. so like whenever we get also to, a Steve. Yeah, he's also Steve, but he is Bith, please. Um. But yeah, like whenever like we get together, like the first twenty minutes are like, look at my roster, like look what I've been working on, and like, yeah. oh, what are you gonna go for next? And like, oh, I'm getting ready for this event, so I'm going for these characters. All the terminology, yeah. it just it does sound like you're talking about, like as if as if you were talking about coding or something. You're just all this vocabulary that's stupid. Like, oh, oh, he's Relic Seven. Oh, mine yeah. is Gear Twelve, and you're like, yeah. what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they're like, here's Relics. Like, like, yeah, once you get to Gear Thirteen, then you get to start relicking. Yeah. Bah, 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 bah. And if you don't have the Zetas, then you aren't maxed on your max. I don't know. Now I'm just also using mods. words to Yeah. There's like if you play this game, you get a character and there's like 12 different w- ways you have to level it up. So like most RPGs or whatever like Pokémon, mm-hmm. you just level up the character and then they get they get their stats increase, but you just have one there's, way of leveling them up and then they get one, to the level and they're good. They get to 100 and they're done. Yeah, there's like four distinct ways of like you have to get them from level one to eighty-five, which you do yeah. by having currency, and then you have and to buy training droids, right? And training droid, I forgot about. So that. So these are those are the two things you need to spend in order to get them leveled up, right? To, and the, in that level, right? And then you have to get them to seven stars from one star, or however many you unlock them at, which is another way of yeah. You have to go through this tedious grind of getting them. Yeah, and then so you, you get to, shards, character shards. When you have a certain amount, each character has their own number of need, how much. How many shards it takes to unlock them? Right, and you need a full three hundred and thirty for every character to get them to the max. Yeah, seven star. Excuse me, <laughs> I almost threw up thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to put gear on them, which le- raises their gear level, which went from twelve to thirteen recently. Oh, that was like a year ago now. Yeah, and then once it's at thirteen, you can go into relics, and there's seven of mm-hmm. those. And relics operate on recycling extra gear that right. you don't need that you have too much of. Until you get to like relic four or five, and then it starts getting difficult. Yeah, then it starts actually using good gear, yeah, which is kind of five. stupid. Yeah, and then yeah. and then you have to max out their abilities, so like their ability to fight in the game and defend yeah. themselves. And some characters have like two moves. Some of them have three moves. Some have like seven now. Yeah, like seven then, different because they've got a bunch of uniques. Yeah, and then that the currency used to upgrade those yep. things is like mods or ability uh, mats. Ability mats. Yeah, and there's like five different kinds. Because there's like yeah, there's green. Mark one, two, three, uh, Omega and Zeta. Zeta. Yeah, and the Zetas are the ones that when yeah. you those abilities, most characters have none or one or two. Some have three. Yeah, now there's some that have three. Mm-hmm, all the legendary characters. Yeah. And then you get to mod the characters so you can like make them unique to your own account. Where, yeah, like, you, you increase can like, different stats. Yeah, and so then, you can like make a character that's more focused on being fast or more focused on like like lasting longer by having more health right. or like more powerful and then that's a whole thing and right and then and then when you when you do all that uh the reward is your girlfriend wants to leave you yeah <laughs> so then you nobody can, wants to be around then you can date other girls except you can't because they will also stay clear from you yeah but i do not want to date other girls babe <laughs> i love you I don't know if she's going to watch this long, but... Okay. <laughs> she was like, I'll do like 15 minutes, and then I tap out. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe at work, she like turns on. She's like, oh, I'll just watch it. And then, then she just gets to this point. She's like, what the fuck? And I get a text like at, you know, t- oh, two weeks from now or something. Oh, yeah. It's no, like, oh, nice to know you care, babe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Yeah. <laughs> Did you like and comment and subscribe? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. She's... I, yeah. But... Anyway. This game... Star Wars, what it, else is going on? What it's else? It's fun. How how long have we been doing this now? What? It's still recording, right? I want to make sure. 59 minutes. Okay. And this we're might, recording, yeah. We could do a, I don't know if you want to. This is also the third time that we've we've sat down to do this because we've had issues yeah, the, the first, first two times. The first time everything was fine, but I just thought like, we were talking about The Last Jedi and yeah. I just didn't like how I was phrasing what I was saying because I didn't want it to be taken the wrong way. Oh, you said some bad things, Luke. <laughs> I was going to get canceled. Well, yeah. No, I it, I didn't I mean, no, honest, I know. we didn't really we didn't really plan it out, so it was us just like shitting on the movie and not really dissecting it. Yeah, we we're just like, I, "I don't I don't like sand people what? <laughs> because they're it's coarse and it's rough and it gets every Wait, that's The sand people are coarse and rough? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Have you ever 
had sex with the same person? No, I haven't. I have not had the opportunity afterwards. Um, uh, no, I that was quoting Anakin in two different ways. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because he doesn't like sand people because they killed his mom. But yeah, no, we just didn't. Yeah, sand people's like they should not use that. It just sounds bad. It just no, yeah, well, Tuscan Raiders. <laughs> I know. Yeah, no, the sand things. people is kind of the slang for them. Like, like it, yeah. it sounds kind of racist. It sounds when you like think slang it. in the real world, though. A little, yeah. it's a little too close to something else that you uh-huh. can't say. So, anyways, uh, but no, yeah, no. So uh, we had that, and then the second one, we were like an hour and a half into our conversation, and then we saw we recorded like fifteen minutes. <laughs> yeah, which was it? The camera? It would no. Is the audio right? The audio went out because that's the one. Oh, the, the camera, camera went out in the first one too. Oh, okay. Yeah, we lost it after like 40 minutes. The battery died or so, or the, the yeah. memory was full. But that one is... Oh, the memory was full because I left something on the card. That was right, yeah. And so then it was like, well, we can't just keep going because it would take... It takes like a long time to take it off yep. and put it on my computer. Yep. So... But yeah, so this is... So so for those who care and we're waiting for the Luke and Mark episode, it's finally here. It's here. Yeah, we did it. And uh, when you did the Tiki Talk, I finished our episode, right? I don't think you ever posted it. I didn't? Okay. Well, I'm trying to remember who I did. Oh, you're right, because I did Daniel Kessenich's, Kessenich's episode, mm-hmm. then Ryan King, yes, and then did. my roommates, Allie and Nick. Yes. So yours was fifth or sixth, because I did Nick Larson, that was four. Right. I'm going to get back to those. I just, it just didn't. Yeah, it's a, editing sucks. <laughs> yeah, and I, I honestly, like, I don't feel like I was ready for those. Because the problem is... You filmed a lot of them real quick. I did 20-something of them. Yeah. But I think the problem is that it's just such a... There's so much production value right. in it in terms of like... Like if you guys don't know, I've done a talk show in a hot tub a lot of times. And I was trying to do like a second season of it. And I think like with this, you just come over. It's the morning. I'm I'm not good at certain times. And then if I'm like putting too much pressure on it, then I kind of... Yeah, my brain like goes like, Ugh! and then I yeah, you panic. Not funny or just I feel like I'm trying too hard or I'm overthinking it, and I'm like this has to be hilarious because it's so important, you know. Right. <clears throat> but instead of just like this, I I should have had this mentality when I did that, and it would have turned out better, which is just to like talk to someone and like see what happens and be right. silly and have a good time, and you know like it doesn't have to be funny the whole time. I'll find the good parts, but. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make you funny, kid. Don't worry. Well, because the Tiki Talk show, Tiki Talk no. talk show is it's supposed to be like a late night show, right? Without like I stopped doing the late night jokes, but I just I want it to be like when you watch it, it's like ten to twenty minutes of like good funny stuff, right? This is a podcast, so you can like get into like a whole thing and like get deep. Then you can be silly again. Mm-hmm. Then you can get sad. Then you can like whatever. I chose not to get sad today. Good. I have to go to San Francisco tonight, so I can't. Oh, okay. Yeah. You can't be sad in San Francisco. That That's should be on a no. coffee mug. What what do you uh Capital Punishment is at Sketchfest this year. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, this is our second year invited back, and uh, we're we are at uh, for those of you listening in uh, a week later, uh, we <laughs> are we are at Piano Fight, and the show is already sold out. It's been sold out for like two or three weeks. That's awesome. I felt really bad because some of my friends in San Francisco have always they're like let us know when your next show is and I like I forgot and I was like uh, about to send them the link and I was like ooh it's already sold out. <laughs> Fuck you Mark's friends. <laughs> Miss you guys. <laughs> you guys sh- I wonder that would have been cool if you could book like a second show that night or tonight. That yeah that would be cool. Um but Sketchfest probably makes it difficult cuz like everything's all booked up and Yeah, full. it's very I mean there it's a it's a for those of you who don't know it's Sketchfest the name implies it is a it's like 2 weeks of a comedy festival. So they're very much on a schedule. Yeah. And uh last year But it's a big festival. It's like it, yeah. big names like oh, when we do the Sac Comedy Festival it's like you you might get like Neil Hamburger, and that's cool, but yeah. you're not going to get like this is like Pat Oswalt's like there, Todd Berry and, like, or Todd anything. Berry. Yeah, yeah. No, last year we were doing uh, our show was at uh, the Bravo Cabaret Theater in the Castro, and the Bravo Theater has like they've got the main stage, and like we were at the smaller stage, which was uh, we also sold that one out. It was like ninety something people. It was great, but like we're we're loading our gear in. And like I pass by this woman out front, and I was like, "Why do I know her? Like she looks so familiar." Uh, and so like we went in, and then like I went back outside, and I was like, "I was like, you're fucking Felicia Day." 
Oh, wow. Like, yeah, so I got to just start talking with Felicia Day for a minute. Nice. And then, was she cool? She wasn't like, get away from me? Like, Yeah, she was super nice. D- D- <laughs> Damien went a little overboard when he, like, he was like, you should come check out our show. God damn it. Yeah, and she was like, uh, I'm doing stand-up in the big room. She does stand-up? I, yeah, I guess so. Every once, I mean, she's a comedian. She's been doing she's been doing shit for like twenty something years. Yeah, but well, yeah, well, her it was, first thing was Buffy, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. But yeah, it was. I just thought it was funny because then, uh, like, I went to the green room. Like, we shared the green room, and I went in there to get beers. And I'm like coming out with like four in my hand, and like I saw her, and I was like, uh, "Hi," <laughs> and she like, was like, "Hi, you having a good time?" Like, yeah. Now I am. <laughs> and then, yeah. And then, like, having that, like, in my head, I was, like, asked to get a picture with her. Yeah. Be, just, like, real quick. And, like, don't, and just and just be gone. And then I was, like, I, you're great. And then I just kept walking. <laughs> That's all you talked to her about? Yeah, a little bit. But, no, I... I, oh, I thought you said you got talking to oh, her. No, like, like, so, like, at first, because, like, like, we were in a group setting. So oh. it was, like, kind of all of us just, like, talking. Okay. So it was, like, like getting to converse with her and just yeah. be, like, how's it going? Like, like, blah, blah, blah. Like, kind of bullshit talking. And then, like, I wanted to get deeper. And it was... Like, I rarely get starstruck, but just seeing her, I was like, oh, you're really cool. Yeah. And I don't know what to say to you, though, because I, I know you're getting ready for the show. Yeah. I'm getting ready for my show. I got beer. Goodbye. <laughs> that's that's still cool. I Man, I forgot to apply for Sketchfest this, for this one. It's And I'm so mad because, like, I feel like like two years ago or three years ago, I didn't get in and I messaged them just like, hey, what do you need to see for me to get in next year? And it, the guy cole stratton like actually emailed me and was like hey next year i'll try to get you in like reapply and i forgot to apply that year yeah didn't get in then i think i reply i didn't apply i don't know like i I fucked it's honestly i the reason that we got in is because we have you uh, have a very unique fun show right it's not it's not just stand up so it it's like because i didn't get it at first too because i applied for like three years in a row and i didn't get in and i was like getting upset about it and yeah. then after seeing how many comics I know that are like incredibly solid and hilarious comics not get in, I was like, oh, it's just like they have yeah. limited stand-up shows that they can do, and they're going to put like the best of the best. Yeah. And they get a lot of like Doug Benson and Fred Armisen's there this year, like people like oh, that. Oh, yeah. So no, it's, and, it's crazy. And a lot have. of them are going to bring their own comics, so it yeah. makes sense. Like now it's like, oh, it makes sense. And then we just had, I think it was uh, Daniel Knows Cole. So I think that's how we got in is like we literally he literally just emailed him and said, hey, this is our show. Here's like a, a two minute clip. And they yeah. came back like, you got it. Like you're in. Well, you guys had a really cool clip on uh, the news that one they made. They produced. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very good. Thank you. Yeah. If you uh, those of you in the Sacramento area, you can go to KCRA dot com and you can find a clip of Capital Punishment on the word of mouth segment. Yeah. They gave me no talking time. Yeah, I know. It's, they didn't they get like they interviewed Daniel and Damien. But they then, did make the show. Yeah. I am I am the host. Yeah. But the host is important. You've got things to say about hosting. Yeah. You've got a bow tie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I have to dress up for the show. No one else does, but I do. I, I'd have to dress do up you, like a Do bo- they make you, though, or is that your choice? They don't make me. It was my idea. at The first show, I just wore a button-down shirt and... And because I did like none of us knew what we were really doing. Like we had a vague idea of what the show was going to be. But yeah, uh, like I kind of realized I was more of a referee than a host. So I was like, oh, wouldn't it be funny if I dressed up like a boxing referee yeah. that you'd see in Vegas with like the bow tie and everything? Yeah, like that guy that has the mic come down. And he goes, let's get ready to rumble. Like that right, whole thing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So so we were like, oh, yeah, that's a funny idea. Let's do that. And it just kind of stuck. It was like, oh, it's kind of a, it makes sense for what we're doing because. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, that was mine. But, like, in the summer, I won't wear all that because it gets way too hot and I can't do it. So, like, I'm trying I'm, to remember, did I do a summer one and what were you wearing? The, the last one I actually remember you on, it was like I was a contestant, too. Oh, yeah. That's right. And I got to talk with them about getting you and JoJo back on it. Although, I think I mentioned it to JoJo and he was like, I don't know if I want to do it. Oh. Because <laughs> he doesn't pun. Wait, yeah, but he's done it before. Right? He's done it twice. Yeah. And he did well. It's just he feels like he doesn't know how to do puns. Uh, um, yeah, but he's, I'll, I'll he's, talk with him. I think we have a, I think we're booking out to like April or May right now. I feel like Jojo's very like, he doesn't want to over expend himself on his bandwidth or something like he's, he, he, he's I got his full time job. He has you know, obviously a girlfriend for like 11 years or whatever. Yeah, and then forever. And then his YouTube channel, it's like, he just does that now. So right. he barely makes time for stand up or yeah. live shows or anything that's not those three things. Right. So it's like, I have to like really 
like I know I, I just ha- to hang out with him. I was like, can I be on your show? I've done that too because yeah, I haven't like actually seen him since uh, October when yeah. they invited us over for like the VR party thing, uh-huh. which like I ended up being the last one there. Like everybody left at like nine o'clock, uh-huh. and I hung around and like drank a couple beers with uh, Jeff and Danielle. Yeah, which was fun. I had a great time. Yeah, and they're great. I finally yeah I finally yeah, went and did was- the show. Like I did a two episodes of JoJo has fun. Yeah, and he picked like the worst game. It was like, what the fuck I love is it playing called? Playing terrible games. Yeah, it was no. It, it it's good because it's funny. Like it lets gives you more stuff to joke about. Right. As it was like it's called like Turbo Tracks or something. It's a, a SNES game. Oh, I know exactly. It, yeah, it looks like the Chevron cars. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah. It's really bad. It's, it's on the uh, the virtual emulator right now. Yeah, it's on yeah, the virtual. Yeah, console. I know which one you're talking if you about. Have a Switch, you can check it out, and it's just like, it's like playing like, it looks like Star Fox, like the original, because it's the same I, graphics. I just thing. tried playing Star Fox. And I was like, wow, this game is really hard to play. Yeah, the frame rate's really bad. You're talking about Star Fox for the Super Nintendo, right? Yeah, not 64. Super, yeah, no, okay. yeah, the 64 one. That's like the totally playable. The crown so jewel of Star Fox. God, I would love for them to just port that over to the Switch and just update the graphics a little bit. Yeah, do you like the Resident Evil 2 remake kind yeah. of thing on it? Yeah. Oh my god. Or just make a new Star Fox game. They've been I saying, yeah, but every time they're like, how about one where like you're not in ships? They're like, no, that's not yeah. what any of us want. Well, that, yeah, for the GameCube, they put that one out that was like Dinosaur Planet, and it's yeah, like, you get out half the time. I never played it. It looked kind of fun. I but... never played it either. Also, can we pause real quick? I got a piece super bad. Oh, I'll just keep going. Okay. Yeah, we'll All do right. it like Joe Rogan style. Okay. I'll just I'll be Right talking. Back. I'm gonna pee. Jamie, can Don't you look worry. up? <laughs> There's no Jamie. It's just Jamie. Me. Jamie, bring that up. Jamie, Jamie, how, what's what's the stats on that? <laughs> uh, yeah. What was I gonna say? I feel like I was gonna say something. Oh, I don't remember. I don't. Yeah, I don't remember either. Star Fox. Hang me out with JoJo. There was a Star Fox that they they made a Star Fox for the 3DS too, and it was like I think it was a remake of. The 64 Star Fox, but then, oh, there was a Star Fox that came out on the Wii U, I think, or the Wii, and it was, it was like, it was so stupid, <laughs> there's like, there was like a, a ship, a ship thing where your ship turns into like a chicken walker, but not just, not just like in Star Wars where it's kind of cool, it like literally looked like a chicken, and I was just like, man, I don't want that, and I never got it. But I feel like I feel like it's time. Like at E three this year, when Nintendo does their Nintendo Direct, there needs to be like a brand new Star Fox coming out this fall. And it's like just straight up like just like the N sixty four one, you go to like there's like three different maybe there's like five different tracks and you can go like this way to this plan this planet and then have those like secret like oh if you go down here, then you go over here and then you get to go to the space station planet or you get to or level or whatever i mean that would be so cool i don't know why they haven't been doing that because it it's like they haven't like over explored star fox like they've done everything with mario so like why why are they neglecting star fox also there's no f-zero x like there really needs to be like they haven't made an f-zero x game since the, the nintendo 64 which is insane and even then that was like only the second game ever I don't think there's been an F Zero since then, unless there's been like a DS one or a three DS one. Talking to yourself is weird. I don't know how I used to get so mad I would like listen to sports radio when I was in high school and Jim Rome was on Sports Eleven Forty here. I mean he was like nationally syndicated or broadcast or whatever, but he, he would do like an hour or two in the middle of the day and his his radio show is just him talking. But he would take like massive breaks between talking. He'd be like, and I don't know, Michael Jordan? I mean, come on. And I was just like, dude, fucking, what? This is dead air. Like, have a guest on, you piece of shit. Mark is crawling under the camera to get back to the. I don't want to mess up the focus. No, I, it's on manual, so it's set. It's not going to change. <laughs> Mark's back. I was just telling the audience that. What was it? We're hour good. 15. Hour 15. Yeah. That's great. Um, I was telling, I was talking about Star Fox history and how, <laughs> so like after the GameCube one, they had, they remade the 64 one for the 3DS. Yeah. Star Fox Zero, I think. I don't know. I think it was just Star Fox oh, 3D okay. or something. 
because it was 3D, but it was on the 3DS where like you don't need glasses. Your the screen is 3D somehow. Yeah, they use hexagonal pixels or whatever. Um, that's how they make the 3D effect. Oh, yeah. I don't know. It blew my mind. I can't believe it's really cool. And it hurts my it hurt my head. So like I would have to just I did yeah. not use it very much, but. It was cool to like look at and show people, and then I'd go like, "All right, turning it off. I'm just gonna play the game now." Yeah, I I was super tempted to buy a 3ds um, because my friend showed me uh, she had Ocarina of Time. Oh yeah, and so like I was just running around the Deku Tree and like the 3D. I was like, "Oh my god, like there's depth and like I can see it's all this weird. shit." Yeah, it's like really cool. And then the more I thought about it, it was like, "Do I really want to like buy another Nintendo product and buy the same games that I've played a hundred times?" Just because it's in like this 3D, and part of my brain's like, "Yes, you idiot!" <laughs> and then the, you're an idiot, but yes. Yeah, and then the other part was like, "Dude, no, it's gonna be like a three hundred dollar endeavor. Don't do it." I I bought a 3DS because I never got a DS, so I felt like it was yeah. finally time to upgrade to because the, the I had the first gen DS. I got one of the first ones, the yeah. big like chunky silver one. Yeah, the it, I didn't like it. I didn't like the design. Mm-hmm. I, I thought it was clunky, and I didn't like how the clamshell closed. It was yeah, because no, I had a Game Boy Advance SP, which was like such a cute little system. Yeah. It was like a little that I, it folded perfectly. It fit in your pocket better than like cell phones at the time. I it thought, was like amazing. Yeah, it's fun. Like because I ended up having to sell mine because when I like first moved out, I needed money. Like I, I was yeah. super poor, and uh, years later, uh, my friend, a uh, couple friends of mine. Like they had, they told me like they never played Pokemon. So uh-huh. I was like, "What?" And they were like, "Yeah, we never played Pokemon." So we all bought uh, Game Boy SPs. Yeah, and like we we like get Ruby and Sapphire. Uh, or something? No, we did Leaf Green Fire Red because uh... I was like, we should play the original, but like you don't need to play the original original. This is close enough. Yeah, and like I ended up getting the uh, the special edition one that looked like an NES. The SP. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was really... It was not worth, like, the $70 I paid for it, but I always remembered I wanted that one. Do you still have it? I do. That one I kept. I held on to. I, I feel like I some of I even have my original be... Brick Game Boy. Oh, cool. Yeah. I never had one of those. I, my first Game Boy was a Game Boy Pocket. Ah, I had that, too. I wish I still had that. I, yeah, I do. It's the see-through one, too. Ah, uh, that the was the one, one I had. It's so good. I love that one. It felt real quick. I just remember, like, being able to, like, put it in your back pocket. Yeah. And just being like, holy shit, Game Boy Pocket. Because the original one is like, like... To be fair, though... Like that. Like, it's a, it's a chunky boy. It's bigger than that, I think. Well, no, just like the, the thickness of it. Was yeah. Like, it was like that big around. Like this? Yeah. It, yeah, it was... Yeah. It, it was like a... Like, it was like, like a... That. Like a Game of Thrones novel. You yeah. Know? Like a paperback. Yeah. Um, But I remember reading... I remember reading about the Star Trek Next Generation cast, mm-hmm. and some of them like had Game Boy Pockets, and they would play it in between takes. No, that's awesome. Yeah, I feel like Marina Sirtis. I don't know how you say her last name. I think it's Sirtis. Yeah, uh, she's a uh, uh, Deanna Troy. Deanna Troy. Yeah, I think she was one of the people that had one, but maybe I'm wrong. That but, wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, which is funny to because that's like an adult. Like back, that was like they they are adults in the way that like. They didn't grow up with video games the way we did, so it's like right. weird when they must those adults the, got into video games. They were probably in like the, they were probably around our age when they were like I'm trying to think like they probably weren't like, oh our age now when they were filming. I don't know. Yeah, they were probably in their late 20s, early 30s, maybe. But it's funny because I'm just picturing Jonathan Frakes like trying to play Game Boy and just he's terrible at it. He's just doing the eyebrow thing. Mm. Wario just, like, World, like, putting his fucking crotch in everyone's face. Yeah, like what are you doing at this com? <laughs> uh. <laughs> what you got? He did it all. It's my favorite. He was like, "What's going on here, Data?" <laughs> yeah, and then he—that's how he got into chairs too. He would like crotch over the chair and sit down. <laughs> wow. <laughs> No, but you know what I'm talking. Yeah. Isn't there like a super clip of like all the times like probably he, on YouTube? He does it so much. Yeah, yeah. It was just like there's so many times. It's like, dude, get your crash out of Data's face. Yeah. Stop making this weird. <laughs> yeah. Pick. There's okay. I feel like there's a few threads that I wanted to go. Th- okay. Well, anyway, Star Game. Fox. I was gonna say that there's like, um, there was another new one that came out on the Wii or Wii U. Oh, I okay. And it there was like the big draw to that game that they were was like. I think they had controls that were like motion controls, which were terrible, apparently. Oh, yeah. And then also, one of the, there was like a new mode for the R Wing or, or a new vehicle, and it was like a chicken walker. <laughs> but it was like literally, it looked like a chicken. Yeah. Oh. It wasn't like cool, like in, that's what I was saying when you were in the bathroom. It wasn't cool like a ATST in Star Wars. It was like a stupid chicken, like it looked like a chicken, but okay. as a Star Fox vehicle. Jamie, can we get the chicken walker up? 
Yeah. Thank you. Oh, look at that. That's great. <laughs> um, I'm going to look it up on here, though, on my phone. Yeah. yeah I don't know. You... Chicken Walker. Yeah, Nintendo, I mean, like a lot of game companies or a lot of things where, like, sometimes they'll they'll do a really good job of listening to the fans about what they want, and other times they're like, nah, you don't know what you want. Like, we're going to release this, and everyone's like, this is not what we wanted. Yeah, so you guys can Google this, but this is... Oh, God. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember what yeah, system Star Fox this Zero. was for. Okay, yeah, this is what you were talking about. But yeah. there was a game before that that was just a remake of the 64 one. That was the 3DS one. Right, because that's a, everybody was getting excited at first because they just, like, they had, I remember they had announced that there was a new Star Fox coming out, and then, like, ah, it's just, like, a remastered. Which isn't a terrible thing, I mean, I guess. No, it, it was really fun. I played it a lot. Um, I was really happy with it, like, playing it um, on my 3DS. Because I also, like, I bought my 3DS right when Borders was going out of business. So, like, the last couple weeks of the of the of working there uh my friend seth and i would sit in the back and like play on our 3ds because no one was there and the people that were it didn't matter like it, what are you gonna get fired you're gonna get let go in a week or two you know yeah. like it's it didn't get we were kicking soccer balls around the store <laughs> we almost hit people in the face damn it didn't matter right it was chaos it's <laughs> mad max in there <laughs> you don't understand <laughs> the doors open welcome to the thunderdome <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh it was for the wii u okay oh, okay so, yeah, I was just saying, too, like, I was lamenting, like, why is there not a new Star Fox in development on the Switch? Because I was yeah. thinking, like, like last year was a pretty good year. Uh, this The year before that was amazing because we got Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey. Well, I think they're even, like, they've been talking, like, they're going to make a new Mario Kart, which they've never done two Mario Karts for the same system. That's like a rumor, though, right? Yeah, it's it's like a heavy rumor though. Like everybody, like I've heard it a lot. Like I'm, I'm I feel like yeah, either a new Mario Kart or they need to do. Uh, they should just do a DLC pack. Like they don't need to do anything other than like. Well, no, I was say, there was uh, Pierre Schneider on IGN's Nintendo Voice Chat was saying his suggestion was like they should do a Mario Kart Ultimate, like Smash Brothers Ultimate, and just everything like all the racers all the maps of yeah, all time yeah no that's what i would like like release it because yeah. if they want to make more money like i i've even said to my friends if they if they uh remade all of the n64 tracks yeah and they were like it's 20 bucks i would buy that happily oh you're saying like mario kart 8 and then just have a dlc pack with the tracks yeah you can buy tracks from like different like even like the gamecube one because i feel like they could make a new game that's like mario kart ultimate and then that has everything on it i mean they could release new packs but that's the thing is like with the racers it's like every racer that's ever been in mario kart is in eight okay they're all there like because like the original was mario luigi well then they could do like racer packs like the way they do smash brothers fighter packs and then you could do like but the racers don't really matter it's just like their weights matter and nothing besides that really does like you can you can no but it's fun to have new racers i guess like you could do like the star fox pack and then you get like star fox oh Peppy. do new nintendo characters yeah that just, would be and cool then it could Banjo become Kazooie. more like smash bros but but if it's like smash bros they're just gonna release all the fire emblem characters yeah no that's true they'll have like 12 fire emblem characters but then they could do like F Zero characters. They could do Donkey Kong. Actually, I'm surprised they could do Captain like a Falcon's Diddy Kong that game. pack, which would be sick. Oh, so how come there's never been a new F Zero <laughs> game since I think the N64 had one? I I talked a lot while you were in the bathroom. Okay. I also brought that up. Okay. <laughs> no, but I didn't go through it. Well, Captain, all right, real quick, Captain Falcon's a really interesting story because everybody knows him as as a the, Smash character. Well, he's a Smash character, yeah, but. Because the people that do, he's like, oh yeah, I think I think he he's like in some sort of race, and the funny thing, <laughs> I <laughs> think he's some sort of racer <laughs> yeah. in the future. Yeah, he's a racer. Yeah, he he they they do like whatever kind of crazy flying car thing, but that's like his side gig. <laughs> Captain Falcon's actual gig is he's a bounty hunter. Oh really? Yeah, that's so, like his actual. So what thing. they should do is they should make a crossover game of Metroid and and F Zero. And then have oh him God. team up with Samus yeah. and bounty hunt some shit. Yeah, that's his actual thing. Like, he's a bounty hunter. That would be so amazing. Dude, I think. why don't, don't we work for Nintendo? We just thought of... I've got too many good ideas for them. Because, first of all, like, okay, Mario Kart, there's a lot of there's a lot of expansion, a lot of things we could do there. Mm-hmm. But when you were in the bathroom, I was also saying, they need to, like, announce a new Star Fox game, and it needs yeah. to... And, like, they could just, just do it like the, the 64 Star Fox, but make it all new, 
you know, new Andros design. More levels, though. That More levels. very short. You can beat that game in, like, 20 minutes. So, yeah, what well, I was saying, like, the same way how you start on Corneria, and then there's, like, three, Yeah, two depending three on, like, if you hit the secret stuff or whatever, like, you yeah. gotta go. Or you can choose sometimes after you beat the level. Right. So yeah, then yeah, they should do, like, two. where Corneria, and then there's, like, eight or five. And then as you go, each one has secrets, and then you can also choose, and then you can, like, maybe even double back and just... You know, and then there could be like an arcade mode where you could do each level and try to get a high score. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, just have like even more options yeah, I don't know. and like different endings or like. I don't know why Nintendo does what they do sometimes. Yeah. Except for mostly when you look at it, you're like, this is clearly monetary. Like, you're just trying to get more money. Yeah. But I mean, the nice thing is they are sort of Disney like in the way that when they do make the important things, they do them well. Like, they do. Like, Mario Odyssey is like a super amazing game. Breath of the Wild, super amazing mm-hmm. game. Mario Kart, Smash Bros. Like, the Smash Brothers, we, it's like, they made a Smash Brothers game to end all Smash Brothers games. The ultimate, yeah. It's like, what else can you do except just add more fighters that's and more maps? And that's what they're doing. But it's like, it's so crazy because you're just like, that's it. Like, don't make another one for like 10 years, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> At least not till the next system. Exactly, and they, that's all they have to do is like put one out every system because mm-hmm. the game lasts so long and it's so the quality is so high. Yeah, no, I love the Switch, except for the Joy Cons. Like that, that's been. In a, I just had to send mine to Nintendo. Is it is it drifting? I have the drift in every one uh, on all the left uh, Joy Cons, and on the right ones, uh, two of them have connectivity issues. Yeah, and then two of them, or the, I have three pairs, so two of them just have connectivity issues, and then also like I forget which one, but two another. Two of them, same, the three. Um, like, the B button doesn't work. Or, like, it'll randomly stick, and, like, you're not pressing it. Oh, I haven't so, like, had we, that my friends that and I would be playing Mario Kart, and all of a sudden they're like, my car won't stop drifting and, like, spinning in a circle. I was like, fuck, I got to finally call Nintendo. Uh, how many Joy-Cons do you have? I have three sets of Joy-Cons <laughs> and a Pro Controller. Wow. Yeah. I feel like the answer is just get Pro Controllers, but then it doesn't make it very portable. <laughs> not as, well, yeah, and that was, like, the shitty thing was, well, the thing I love pro about Pro Controllers this, are expensive. So are the Joy Cons are more. Really? The Pro controllers are seventy dollars. Joy Cons are eighty. Okay. And I had three sets, so that's like when I was like, at, uh, yeah, like when I was looking up, I was like, does it cost anything to fix them? Like, no, it's free. I was like, goddamn right. I spent like two hundred and fifty dollars yeah. getting these things, and like they knew it was an issue. Yeah. But um, no, that was like the only sad thing was like now that my controllers are being sent to the Nintendo shop, um, my friends and I were watching TV, and I just wanted to play like whatever, like Mario or whatever. And, like, I went to go pick it up, and there's no Joy-Cons in it. I was like, no, oh, I can't play. And, like, the tablet mode. I mean, I could with the controller, but I just want to hold it up to my face like a Game Boy. Yeah. Yeah. It sucks. I think one of my Joy-Cons has drift. And I got, for Christmas, I got the watermelon ones, which is, like, the, the best colors ever. The pink and green? Yeah. Yeah, I got oh. that, too. The yeah. guy, on, the Nintendo guy on the phone called him Cosmo and Wanda. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Uh, but I think even that, like, I was playing some game, and I kept going up. And I had to, like, exit Pokemon Shield and restart it, and then it was fine. But it was, like, I don't know if that was a Joy-Con issue or just the software, but... Yeah, it was probably a Joy-Con issue. God, it's so frustrating. Yeah, it was super frustrating. It's been working, like, 99% of the time. Yeah, just watch it. If it starts happening more often, just call Nintendo and just literally tell them I have Joy-Con Drift, and they'll... Yeah. Like, you don't don't have to, like, they they send you a shipping label, and you just put them in a box and send it to them. You don't have to do anything else. Yeah, no, that's good. It's just it's crazy that they ship those things out with the problem, and they haven't fixed it. But I guess maybe they've made so many of them they have to sell the product, and then well, they knew before the launch they apparently knew that like it was going to be a problem, but they were just like whatever. Ugh. That was the annoying thing. God damn it, Nintendo. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't like with the the Wii the Wii remote where they started doing the like the motion thing to like make it better because they were like, hey, we just figured out the technology to make it better, and then they started making the remotes better. That was a little different. Yeah. Except for the like, I do remember when uh, all the Joy Cons or the uh, Wii remotes to the TVs were becoming a thing. And the Nintendo was oh, when like they're throwing when people were throwing them. Yeah, because they weren't yeah. using the strap. So then they had like I forget what they were. Everybody called them the uh, Wii Mote condoms. It was like like you could you yeah. could you could get them for free because Nintendo didn't want to be sued for like breaking TVs and just like the big squishy rubbery thing that you'd put the that remote that, into. I got those like they just came with my Wii. Yeah, because they, they started selling them. But like yeah, I remember I went online to the website and they said you know if you don't have any of these like we'll just give you up to four for free. 
I, I so like I those things. No, they were actually way more comfortable. Yeah. It, it was fun. They were squishy. Yeah. It was. It did look like a condom, though. That's weird. Yeah. But also, I feel like my Wii, like, for some reason, the batteries in my Wiimotes just, like, you know how batteries will, like, explode oh, just or eating, yeah. they get gross and, like, come out, like, the alkaline or whatever. Yeah. The, the uh, acid mm-hmm. will leak. That, like, happened in, like, both of my Wiimotes. Damn. And I was just like, is this the Wiimote's fault or the, just, uh, did I just leave the batteries in? Or they're just shitty batteries, maybe. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. It was frustrating. Yeah. And then the those little, like, rubbery things started, f- like, degrading and feeling weird. Like, some rubber stuff, after, like, f- three or two or three or four years, it'll get, like, yeah, just a weird consistency. Yeah. Like, I don't know. There's some other controller or something I had. Oh, one of these. My recorder. My audio recorder. Yeah, you, I remember you used to have the big... I still have... No, no, I'm saying like I have two of these and the right. other one I have if you touch it it's like it's like residue comes yeah, off. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I feel like I should just throw it away. I don't know. Yeah, one of my my last it's laptop gross. had that. And I was like am I doing something weird with my laptop? No. No. It's just it's, it's just, just not good. It's just 10 years old now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I have I have a MacBook that's like probably it's getting to be 10 years old. It's like 7 Mm-hmm. So I need a new laptop, but it's aluminum or whatever, so it just it's like ind- it's indestructible. <laughs> or is that a word? Indestructible? Yeah. Okay. It doesn't sound like closet. <laughs> closet. <laughs> Refrigerator. <laughs> Refrigerate. <laughs> Refrigerate? Why not refrigerate? You didn't even refrigerate. You didn't even refrigerate the first time. <laughs> How can you re when you have it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> God, this Seinfeld's great. Uh, I feel like we should wrap up soon, just right. because I want to do other things. I'm also getting hungry, and I have to get ready to. Get, like, we're leaving for San Francisco at like two thirty. So yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, what do you do? You, you're good. You, no one can go to your show, so fuck that. Suckers. Now, nah, do you have another one coming up? Another capital punishment? Uh, yes. The next capital punishment will be at Luna's Cafe, which is located. At fourteen fourteen Sixteenth Street, and that will be on Friday, February seventh. Oh. Uh, show starts at eight o'clock. Uh, I recommend getting there uh, like by seven thirty if you want a table. Uh, the show has Fills been up fast. Yeah, the show's been sold out uh, consistently for a year to standing room only. Uh, and now that we were on the news, I anticipate more people, and we are still talking about uh, looking for another venue. I. Are you guys? Do you not do the punchline because it's it's too like sketchy about selling it out because it's harder? Y- yes, no. I mean, we kind of we do rely a bit on. I mean, like most of the show, like we 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 try and get we do civilians, so like we'll have non comics on the show yeah. because they'll bring out tons of friends and family because they're like, oh my god, our friends on stage. Yeah, like, that helps puns. a lot. It's it a good does. way, and that's a great show for like having a bringer because they don't have to be a comic. Yeah, and it, it the like punning is. It's not easy, but it's also easier than like doing stand up. Yeah, it's different. Like I'm not good at punning. Like I'm that's why yeah. I host the thing. But if you're like smart and you like words, it's like yeah. you could do it. You yeah, know? and that's why like we have a lot of people will come up after the show and ask if they can do it and we just tell them like give us your information and we'll contact you and we'll set up a date. Yeah. Um But yeah, I mean the last time we did punchline cuz uh, at least Damien Daniel and I, like we were like the like the week or two leading up to it, we were just like, fuck, I hope people come out because yeah, you know, you have to have I think I think when we talk to them, like you need to have like thirty five people here or something like that. And Which you, isn't too many, but it's not at but Luna's it's easy. Yeah, but yeah, and when can, you think that can be like twenty or twenty five and you're like, it's full in here. But right. Then, and when you just think about the punchline, you just you want it you want to have as many people show up as you can. Yeah. And we ended up we almost sold out the floor. Yeah. So um no, was, I, was that the one I filmed? Yes. Okay, yeah, that was yeah. A, that was a good show. Yeah, yeah, so I do want to talk with him about like maybe we should try doing quarterly there and just see where it goes because we could do Sunday or Wednesday shows. Yeah. And yeah, no, uh, we talked a little bit about the B Street Theater because I think they have a smaller room and like we were going to start there. Oh yeah, they have. I always forget about that place, but yeah. that place is nice. Yeah, it's it's just it's one of the it's like it's new and like everybody forgets it's over there now. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty much like the only like we had a couple other. Uh, venue say like uh, Easy on I said that they wanted to have us there. Interesting. And I had to be the one to be like Lu- uh, Easy is no bigger than Luna's. Like there's not really. There's a also point. no stage in there. So I well, that's know. what I said. I was like, we'd have to take you know where that one table is near the toilets. I was like, yeah. we'd have to go up there, and it doesn't make sense. 
Yeah, or stand in front of where the bathrooms are. On, or, like, the stage could be the top of the stairs, or, but that wouldn't make or sense Or the either. second doorway, the second set of double doors, where, like, they don't want you going in and out anymore, but... Oh, yeah. That was, like, the only other spot, but uh, uh, otherwise, I was like, it's the same size as Luna. I was like, there's not really a point in doing it over there. No. So... It, it would... It's a, it, that would be, like, an interesting room. I feel like I would... What I would do with that idea is just, like, try to start a stand-up showcase, like, once a month. And like have the yeah. stage maybe be like where the booths are, the upper like, like if you're facing the bar and you turn right, yeah, all the on the side wall, yeah, yeah like yeah, yeah. up there could be the stage, and then the whole floor is like right. where people sit. That that'd be actually like a cool venue for like a tight little show. It could be, but yeah, I wouldn't do your show there. No, you, there was no point. You're it's mu- just, you're just downsizing a little bit, or just I like think a there's less move. seats than Luna's. There's more seats. I think there's less. Oh, le- yeah. If not, maybe about the same, but yeah. But yeah. So long story short, February seventh, everybody, eight o'clock. Tight. Luna's Cafe. Do you have any other shows? Anything you want to talk about? Stand up. Uh, no, I I haven't asked to be on a show in a minute. I just I just started getting back into it because I was I was going through a lot of shit last year. Yeah. So I took a I took a pretty long break, and now I'm getting back into it. I did a show last week, and it was funny because like the days leading up to it, I was like going out to do mics and I was going through my my uh, my material book and most of the I was like I don't remember like 80% of my jokes now dang yeah most of them I was like it's probably fine that I don't remember these ones but I've been like having yeah. to like did you write anything new I have not written a single new joke yet no I've done some riffing and like adds, added some tags to a couple jokes but uh-huh. I haven't started a new joke yet it's yeah it's been difficult it's kind of good to come away from it for a while and like let your brain stew, and then you read stuff and you're like, "Well, that's dumb. Right? Why don't I say this?" And right. then it's way better. Now. Like, I've, it's been a combination of that, and then just um, like the material I forgot. I was like, "There's probably a good reason. I probably don't need to do this style." Like, I've kind of been going for a more a different style of what I was doing. Yeah, a little bit. So, yeah, I, yeah that's about it. How about you? What you got cool. going on? Well, and your your social media is <laughs> at. Mark Berg. Uh, I have a Twitter. I never use it except to like JoJo's things. Okay. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Mark J. Berg. Uh, you can find me on Venmo at Mark Berg. No one took it. Um, <laughs> which is weird. Send me money. <laughs> yeah. I'm a poor college student now. I could use some ramen. Uh, at Mark Berg. That's M-A-R-K-B-U-R-G on Venmo. Uh, what else am I? If you want to play PlayStation with me during my downtime, uh, you can find me at Admiral Fail. That's Admiral underscore Fail. What That's a good name? What the hell else is? I'm on Instagram as Mark J Berg, uh, Facebook Mark Berg. There's only like 20 of us in America, so you'll. That's, not uh, a lot. That's a good amount, I guess. Um, what other social media thing? I think that's about it. That's pretty much all the ones. That I'm also on Reddit at Mark Berg. You could or at, at Admiral Fail. You can see me make dumb comments in the Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes subreddit. <laughs> <laughs> I get downvoted a lot there. Oh yeah, is your karma bad now. No, I've got I've got like 400 karma. I don't give a shit. Oh, okay. But no, like cuz people if you think that we complain about that game, people on Reddit bitch about every little thing. Oh yeah. Like there was a day that like There's I some really mean, some some guy angry just angry memes on there. Some guy just had a glitch on like, you know, when you're doing the daily challenges and it says at the top like you did two battles and this is what you got. Well, his like the number of battles didn't show up. So he was just bitching that it was gone. Yeah. And I was like, "But I know you did six and I got like 20 downvotes." Because people like CG needs to fix these problems. I was like, yeah, you guys need to calm the you fuck can't, down. You can't defend the game on the internet. Yeah, it's not safe. Well, for... it sucks too when your friend works there and like, like he yeah. tells you what they. It was like, yeah, they have a lot to do. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, people that, don't know though. Yeah. How about you? What you got going on? Well, Ooh. Uh, you can find me at Epic at Epic Tiki Comedy on Twitter. Hey, that's Epic where Tiki, this is. Yeah. At Epic Tiki on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Subscribe to our channel. You're on it if you're watching this, but if you're listening youtube.com slash epic tiki comedy um i really want more subscribers please and let's put out content also like you know com- like comment and talk about this or what do you think about star fox should they have more should you- we have gone more political with this episode yeah should we read the news and talk about trump and his dumb hair should we talk about his tanning uh those are the policies that are most important to me <laughs> his body policies because no one ever talks about that okay um <laughs> also let's see so okay then i don't i'm gonna nathan drake by the way it is nathan oh drake. fuck yeah it is oh, cool. nathan drake bitches um i'm trying i'm trying to put this out thursday the 23rd of january so that's tomorrow yes 
I'll be in school. I'll probably put it out tomorrow. Yeah. And then, so if if you're li- if you're watching or listening to this the day of, come out to Stab Comedy Theater the next day, Friday at 10 p.m. I believe or 10:30. Thursday or Friday. Friday. Okay. Friday the 24th, January 24th, 2020. What time do you say? 10? 10 or 10.30. I can't remember. But come to Stab. Actually, just go go at like 7 and see all the shows. But I'm going to be doing the Stab podcast. Ooh, I'll be there. Oh, sick. Yeah, I want to come watch. Okay. Cool. We got one. Jesse. <laughs> Jesse, come, we got one. Come hang out. Uh, I'm going to buy a sweatshirt soon. But anyways, so do that. I'm going to be doing Stab the podcast. Then... Uh, family brunch on the twenty sixth. Okay, <laughs> and, very nice. Uh, and then I'm gonna be at the Stratosphere in Las Vegas with Jimmy Earl. Ooh, we're gonna be traveling, doing a vlog, f- doing sets. Very cool. Uh, I think Chris Storn is on that show. Oh, uh, okay. I want to say he's on that show. I could be wrong. There's like some comics that are cool that I don't know personally that I mix up together. Let's see. It's on my. Is it on my Facebook? Oh, here. Here we go. Vegas, baby. Dustin Wood, Carolyn the Comic, Vaya Satya. I think I don't I might have butchered your name, but Oh, he, Carolyn. Very, okay. Very nice guy I met at Cobbs when I did that show. Yeah, Chris Storen is uh I believe he's headlining or Probably that would make sense. Hosting. And then Unless Jimmy, Jimmy is headlining. Yeah. It doesn't say on here. It just has Chris Storen above us to the left. So yeah, Chris is probably poster. headlining and Jimmy's probably hosting. Yeah. And then I will be Let's see. You guys don't really need to know this, but I'm doing cool stuff. Uh, I'm doing verbal insults on the 7th. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I'm not. I told them I don't want to do it this month. Uh, there goes an, I'll be doing another There Goes an Airboat with Jimmy Earl at Stir Crazy Comedy Club on the 16th and on the Sunday, Where's February Stir- 16th. Where is Stir Crazy? Arizona. So if I know anyone in Glendale, come hang out. Arizona, not California. Yeah. Actually, I feel like all the Arizona cities are next to each other like glendale phoenix they're all like right there like if you stand in phoenix you can like see i don't know i'm pretty sure when i was there last time i was in tempe and i was like yeah phoenix is right over there and glendale i might be wrong no one of them is farther away from the other ones and then the 20th i've been in i've been to yeah phoenix for all of like 20 minutes when i had a layover back from heathrow i almost missed my flight because i went to have a cigarette like an idiot oh you fucking addict (laughs) <laughs> it was bad I was traveling for like 20 hours and like you can't smoke like the entire time and I was like I just fuck fuck traveling yeah no that's why I'm glad I never started cigarettes yep. okay I'll just finish February anyway, sorry uh, sack punch I'm doing the sack punch showcase finally again after like a year on the 20th nice February uh, thank you Wendy Lewis I'm gonna do Dustin Wood has a show wherever he lives in the north of California I think the north <laughs> I don't know if he's in California or Oregon. I think it's in Oregon, but I'm going to be there the Wairica, 21st maybe. and 22nd. So probably what, around Wairica? Uh I think so. I don't no, know. That sounds I'll, I'll right. find out closer. Uh, and then, yeah. So, cool. Do that stuff. Thank you for watching, and we'll be back with more episodes soon. I don't know who will be the next guest because people cancel and we shift around. I was supposed to have, like, Emma Haney three times. We kept fucking it up. And then JR, I had JR and I were recording one, and then the the audio went out, so we only got 19 minutes. Oh, so uh, same thing out. we did. Yep. So, anyways, thank you. Bye. Peace.